be. Uh, Alma, they did walk in the ways of the Lord, did observe to keep his commandments and statutes, yea, they did keep the law of Moses. They did look forward to the coming of Christ. And that's the difference in the Book of Mormon. The Book of Mormon is Messiah, Lamb, and Atonement centered. That's what it's all about. And so it, it's how the law of Moses should have been lived. So if you want to understand the true spirit of the law of Moses, you read the Book of Mormon and you'll get the spirit of the law. That's what's really important about that. Okay, uh, now down here, Alma. They were strict in observing the ordinances of God according to the law of Moses until it should be fulfilled. These are all direct references, right? There's a multitude of indirect references. Um, and uh, Moses, or, excuse me, uh, this is Mormon's abridgment. A few began to preach. Now, th if you notice the time, the times were going by 148, 124, 121, 90 B.C., uh, 74 B.C. Uh, they're all down to this time. Now, here we're going to find that in 1 A.D. it says, Mormon says, a few that began to preach, it was no more expedient to observe the law of Moses. They were soon convinced of the error which they were in, for the law was not yet fulfilled. It's not going to be until 3 Nephi 15 that Christ is going to say, I'm the one that gave the law, and I'm telling you the law is now fulfilled, and you don't have to live it anymore, because I've now completed the atonement, I've completed all the necessary requirements, and we're going back to the fullness of the gospel with the restoration of the Melchizedek priesthood. I'm going to give that to my disciples here. Hmm. Onward and upward. So you see, isn't that a kind of exciting uh, to think about that? All right.